YPWW. We pray that God has been good to you all week long. And let's begin with a word of prayer. God, we thank you for today. We thank you for this opportunity to gather around your word. We thank you for how awesome you are. And God, as we go forth in your word, we ask that you reveal it to us. Give us a mind to apply this lesson to our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And thank God. Amen. Amen. So today uh, we're on lesson number five. Encourage yourself. Amen. Encourage yourself. And the aim of this lesson is to show how the discouraged can overcome discouragement by simply encouraging themselves in the Lord. And again, we're in our lesson text is 1 Samuel chapter 30 verses 1 through 8. So again, we're going to try to keep this lesson focused on the scripture that uh, we're talking about, encouraging yourself. So our memory verse is really the focus of this lesson. 1 Samuel 30 and 6, the word of the Lord says, And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people were grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Amen. And the word of God is blessed. And our lesson tonight is focusing on that, you know, but David encouraged himself in the Lord. And when you start off this scripture, our memory verse for tonight, uh, it starts off by saying that he was greatly distressed. And when you need to be encouraged, that means discouragement is present. So again, just a quick recap. Remember, you know, David and his men, they just got back to Ziglag and, you know, they found that they're town really was burned to the ground wives children property everything gone you know they taken captive and now everything precious and the worth value really is taken away from them and everything that's going on you know remember verse four a few lessons ago we had you know it talked about how david and the people they we wept could till they could they cried till they couldn't cry no more but then you turn around, you know, the people got mad at David. They started talking about stoning him. They were blaming him for what happened. But this is where we started to kind of focus on David. You know, and while studying this lesson, you know, we quote, encourage yourself in the Lord all the time. And, but that really is easier said than done. So, but it can be done. And David proves that to us. But when you look at David, remember, you know, Samuel had already anointing him you know he was already gonna be he was anointed to be king over israel so you know he was a man after god's own heart so he was chosen to lead god's people so you got to start there really to understand how distressed david was because he knew he was called he knew he was called to do what he was going supposed to be doing so while he stood there you know david he he had to ask the question like why is this happening you know if god with me you know why did this really happen so you know, he shows us what a child, child of God is supposed to do. You know, what does a child of God is supposed to do when discouragement comes and make you feel like a failure and you rejected by the people uh, that you care about or and on the flip side, thought cared about you. But what really put this lesson into perspective for me is that, you know, when you say David had nobody to lean on, he didn't have nobody. You know, Jonathan wasn't enough. You know, his, that was his friend, we know, but he ain't nowhere to be found. His parents gone, you know, his wife's his wife been taken, wife been taken. So where can he go for encouragement? So what we got to take note of is that, you know, these people were discouraged. The people were discouraged as well, but they were angry. They looking for somebody to blame. And, you know, we got to make sure we ain't on that side excuse me, of discouragement. You know, we can choose to respond like they did and the world approve it because that's how they want you to respond. They want you to be angry. They want you to be mad. They want you to be like we've continued to say, discourage people when they really don't know God, really not close to Jesus. They want everybody around them discouraged, want everybody around them mad, want everybody around them upset. So when we respond like that, the world going to prove it. But that ain't what God's will is for us. But when you respond like they did, ain't nothing going to really change. You know, so dwelling in that discouragement ain't going to help. Being angry ain't going to help. Blaming somebody or somebody, something else, that's not going to help. Even if they had picked up the stones and stoned David and killed him, their situation still was going to be the same. 
they still was not, they was just gonna add more fuel to that discouragement. So that's where David began to set himself apart from the pack. You know, David encouraged himself in the Lord. So how can we encourage ourselves in the Lord? We have to get our strength from God. You know, believe it or not, even though that scene that David was present at looked discouraging, God was still with him. You know, and it, if David was going to get to the point where God wanted to him to be at, then he had to lose some things. He had to lose some people. He had to cry till he couldn't cry no more. He had to get that self-pity out of his system. He had to face being alone and he had to overcome that. He couldn't get the strength. You know, we all like to be encouraged by other people. We like the pats on the back and the praises, but he couldn't get that at that time. So he had no choice but to get his strength from God. Ephesians 6 and 10 tells us, finally, my brother, and be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And that's what God's purpose for David was. The purpose behind all the stuff he experienced, experiencing God wanted David to get his eyes off his situation and get the strength and encouragement he needed from him. So he had to learn how to stand alone and he had to learn how to depend on God. And he had to learn how to seek God for his guidance and not depend on other people. He couldn't look for direction and comfort from nobody else. And so when you by yourself, especially when you're facing discouragement, it really shows you what's in you. It shows you how really close you are to God. Because remember, David, he was living with the Philistines and he was leaning a lot on King Achish. You know, so God wanted to give David the kingdom, but David, he was, you know, he was comfortable. And he was about to settle for Ziklag. And David wasn't going to let David, uh, God wasn't going to let David settle in a place where they really depended on the flesh to survive. But even while David was facing all of these discouragement, he started rejoicing in God's faithfulness. So what really looked like defeat was really a sight of victory because David, he, he got to the point where he, he remembered like, you know, God is still God. So he started encouraging himself in the Lord. What he realized is that no matter what it looked like, I know that God is still God. And once they clicked, you know, David went to God and God responded. And then directions and answers started to come. And God answered and told him, without fail, you will recover all. So again, we're going to try to keep it in perspective so we won't get ahead. But he answered him, without fail, you're going to recover everything. You know, so from then on, David could brag on God. You know, he could tell, like, you know, in, especially in Psalm 138 and 3, he says, In the day when I cried, thou answered me and strengthened me with strength in my soul. So we have to remember, God, David realized that no matter what this looked like, I know that God is still God. And so he turned his mind. He had to turn his mind. We got to think right. You know, one thing me and my wife say in our house all the time is that, you know, God ain't going to come down here and make you think right. He's given us the word. He's given us the Holy Ghost. He saved us. You know, he's not going to force you to think. So he, we got to discipline ourselves to think right. We got to train ourselves to think positive thoughts. We, we got to get our thinking right. Because if you think discouraging thoughts, then you're going to always be discouraged. But if you think encouraging thoughts, then you can walk in encouragement. You know, so when we look at this, the Bible is filled with promises and truths about who God is, his power and his ability. But it's up to us to allow him to live through us and believe in him if we really want to be overcomers. So it is time that we encourage ourselves. And the key part of our lesson today is the word yourself. You know, when you get discouraged, you got to dig deep down within yourself and you got to get inspiration from God and strength from God, but you got to do it yourself. Sometimes, you know, I love my wife and my wife is very encouraging. She always encouraging. But sometimes, you know, I have to go for God for myself. You know, I have to, she, it may be the perfect thing she's saying, but at the end of the day, I have to receive what she's saying also, but I still got to experience God. I got to go to God for God to strengthen me so I can overcome. You know, so, you know, we quote the scripture, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. He's in us. So if he's in us, then that means we have the ability to overcome. And if he's greater than the world, then he's greater than whatever it is we face it. That means we got whatever it takes to defeat whatever it is in the world that's discouraging us. 
And when you discourage, you can feel like, you know, you just can't function. You stagnant. You can't be effective. First John 2 and 20, the word of the Lord says, but ye have an unction from the Holy One and ye know all things. So no matter how discouraged you get in life, you got what it takes to make it. But we can't wait for people to help us do it. You know, sometimes we get guilty of looking for other people to encourage us. And when nobody else does it or the people we expecting to come do it don't show up, then we find ourselves more discouraged. But we have to learn to encourage ourselves in the Lord. And, and David, again, he really didn't have nobody. He didn't have nobody to encourage him. So if David was going to overcome discouragement, he was going to have to do it all by himself. He was going to have to find his way to God so God can strengthen and encourage him so he could get the strength that he needs to go forth in God. So he was going to have to encourage himself in the Lord. And that's exactly what he did. And sometimes that's going to be what we have to do. Sometimes it's going to be situations and times where we're going to have to fast. We're going to have to pray. We're going to have to cut the TV out. We're going to have to surround our house and our circles with worship. You know, so we have to get to the point where we encourage ourselves. When you're encouraged, that means I've, I've gained the strength, the confidence, the hope to continue to go on and do whatever it is that God has given me to do. Amen. So well, I thank God for this lesson. Amen. And if you need encouraging, remember, God is there and he's ready to give you the strength and the hope and the passion that you need to continue with him. Amen. So tonight we're going to leave you with question number six in the book. Have you ever encouraged yourself? If so, how did you do it? Amen. Let's end with a word of prayer. God, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for your word. We thank you for who you are, God. We thank you for being so great, so kind, so merciful. And God, we pray, God, for everyone that comes across this video. God, we pray, God, that you help them, God. God, that you help us, God. Save the sinner, reclaim the backslider, strengthen the saints everywhere. Oh, God, we give you all glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank God. We thank you for joining us. We are the Belt of Church of God in Christ, Plain Dean, Louisiana. Thank God for our pastor, Pastor Donald Douglas. First Lady Douglas, my own wife. To all of you, if not a subscriber, subscribe to the page. We love you. God bless you. God keep you. And if it's the Lord's will, we'll see you next week.